boy, isn't anxiety fun! Afraid, released earlier this year in 2023, and is directed by Ari Esther, who's also directed the recent cult hits Hereditary and Midsommar, two films that have stayed in my brain ever since that I've seen them because they are so psychologically scarring. And this movie is starring Joaquin Phoenix, Nathan Lane, Amy Ryan, Stephen McKinley, Haley Squires, Kylie Rogers, Parker Posey, and Patti LuPone. And the reason why we're talking about Bo is Afraid today is because, well, first off, it's just a psychologically horrific, comedic, hilarious, weird-ass film that I wanted to watch for the month of October because it's Halloween month, it's all spooky, we got all the spooky decorations up, I think this looks really cool. But it was also a PayPal recommendation from one of my contributors and supporters of my channel, someone who is constantly recommending films that are actually really good and some that are campy as shit. This is from Dr. Camp, thank you very much Dr. Camp, and if any of you out there also want to be like Dr. Camp and help support me and contribute to this channel, you can now select the QR code that is now in the bottom left of your screen. Any size donation will do if you send it over my way and you can attach your movie recommendation with your donation. And if I have access to it, I will watch it, review it, and give you a little shout out here just like what I did with Dr. Camp. And this film is... <laughs> I don't even know how to talk about this thing because... I'm so confused as to what actually happened. From what I gather, Bo Wasserman is someone living with severe anxiety and depression. One day he finds out that a tragedy has happened at home with his mother, so he tries to muster up all of the courage so that he can get home to see her. But his anxieties take over, and he starts going down this odyssey that'll take him to strange-ass places and provide him with weird-ass emotions. Ari Aster is one of these new directors who is able to... <laughs> God, this is so hard to talk about this movie because it, it, I'm just so confused as to what I just saw. This is three hours of a surreal, comedic, and horrific look at someone who has severe anxiety. And as someone, I mean, all of us have our own anxieties and we all are depressed from one time or another. There are some people out there, though, that do suffer from chronic depression and chronic anxiety that is just crippling to them to where they can't even get out of bed in the morning. And that's who this person, Bo, is. But his journey is not told in a linear structure. Hell, it's not even told in... Gosh, a, a real structure. I don't even know how it's told. It's just, we're, we're literally living in Bo's mind. Sometimes it looks like he is in what we would call reality. He's in his apartment, he goes to the grocery store. But then there are other times where he will see something that's on the news about a local serial killer who's going around and stabbing someone. All of a sudden, the anxieties and the fears about that person on the TV screen starts manifesting, and then that stabbing serial killer is now in his apartment or is on his street butt-ass naked, going around and stabbing people. But that's happening in his mind. It's not happening in real life, or maybe it's happening in real life. I don't know. We're never explained that. Typically, another film, if it's dealing with this type of storytelling, we would have moments in the script and in the film where we would cut to someone else's perspective. Someone else who is living in, quote-unquote, the real world, so that we, the audience, can have a grasp on things and go like, okay, so... This is happening in Bo's head. We would consider him, you know, loopy or crazy. Here's the actual, like, normal people and the people with the normal brains. We can side with them. We don't get that. We are living 100% in Bo's brain here. And it leads to a film that doesn't really have a set story. It doesn't have a set path. We're just going along this journey. Like I said in the plot synopsis, this feels very much like Bo's Odyssey, where he is going from one place to another. He's trying to get home, but through some meeting of another person, or through some fears that leads him down a different path, he is basically zigzagging, <laughs> making his way all the way home, as opposed to just going in a straight line, getting a plane ticket, and just going straight home. He is going all over the place. And it's a film that is not for everyone. Obviously, from all the box office 
office numbers. This film completely bombed at the box office. I mean, how, how can you market this thing? As opposed to Hereditary and Midsommar that have more of a horror aspect, so those wanting to go in for jump scares and to feel frightened would more likely go to those. Those are more commercially based movies. But we don't get a film like this if Ari Aster doesn't make those two films, so I would assume that after making those, he went to A24 and was like, hey, I gave you two great hits, so now I really want to do this thing. Oh, what is it, Ari? Well, it's a three-hour, you know, tragic horror romp of this guy and his anxieties, and he kind of just goes all over the place. We have penis monsters showing up in here, and I'm sure the producers are just sitting there going like, well, who's going to watch? You, you really want to make it? Uh... Okay, here's the check. Thank you for the other two films. Yay. So I give tremendous kudos to Ari Aster for being ambitious and providing a very original film and a film that really I don't think anyone else would make or anyone else would have the guts to make because as it turned out this was a box office bomb but I feel like through DVD purchases, Blu-ray purchases, video on demand purchases, I feel like this movie is going to become a cult classic where people will watch it to get the experience and to feel the emotion. That's what we get from this movie. We don't get a straight story or a straight message that is provided to us. Something that I like and I prefer for my movies. I like being told a message. I like going along a path. Here though, this isn't about a message. This is about conjuring feelings inside of you. We're watching this character Bo live out his anxieties for all of us in order to have us feel something, not in order for us to learn or to be educated on something. This is theater of the mind. This is an absurdist take where they focus more on conjuring feelings inside of you as opposed to providing you with some type of message. And I'm not a fan of absurdist theater. I've tried it. I've tried it multiple times. I used to teach theater and whenever we got to the absurdist part, I was like, here it is. I don't like it, but here it is, maybe all of you students will. But I can appreciate the genre and I can appreciate what the director was trying to do with this movie to conjure up some emotions. And there are points in here where I am feeling very emotional as to what's happening with Bo. There are other points in here where just the sheer confusion as to what's happening and just the creepiness of everything just it's causing some type of emotion in me that I don't like, but I'm appreciating the emotion that's being conjured. But the biggest kudos for this film has to go to Joaquin Phoenix. This film, this character could have easily been portrayed as a comedy, like a straight comedy, as a parody on something. It felt like this character could have easily been made fun of by another actor. Joaquin Phoenix is... 100% dialed in and he is 100% committed to everything that this character goes through and everything that this character is feeling. There are moments in here where it's just flat out crazy. Like what the hell is going on? This makes absolutely no set. But there is Joaquin Phoenix center screen in the middle of all of this giving you 100% conviction in feeling what he is feeling in the scene and what he is doing in the scene. It's a wonderful performance and he plays four different areas of himself. He plays Bo in supposedly today. He also plays an old man Bo. He plays a young kid of himself with a little girl that he met on a cruise and it was him exploring his sexuality and exploring feelings towards someone. What a weird ass freaking movie. <laughs> I don't know if I can recommend this because I... I don't know who would go out of their way to see this unless they're looking for a very unique experience. This film is not, is not for everyone. Someone like me who is more interested in going to the theater and going to the cinema just to experience an event, I feel is more apt to enjoy this. But if you're just a casual movie goer and you turn this on, Personally, I don't see how you can enjoy this, but maybe you will. I just can't. <laughs> it's so unique. It's such a unique experience. It's a unique film that I probably would guarantee that Ari Aster will not be able to make again just because how this film did in the box office and just the ambition behind this one. I feel like he's gotten his fill. Or at least if I was Ari Aster, I'm like, okay, yeah, I got my fill. That was... You know, that was cool. It wasn't a film that was really great for business, and I'm probably not going to get another studio to agree to another film like this if I have those ideas, so 
you know what? I think this is good enough. I think we're fine. I'm gonna give Bo is Afraid three out of five Blu-rays. Not exactly what I had in mind, but not bad. So guys, what did you think of Bo is Afraid? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this video, then comment below and let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button to make sure you hit that bell. See you the next time I release my next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel. But in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.